In today's video, we're going to be talking about and trying to understand why Ori is so good at mid. I personally think he is the best mid laner at this tournament. I'm not saying that the other ones are bad by any means. I'm just personally in love with the way he plays, the way he itemizes, and that's what we're going to be looking at. Why the items he buys are so cool, and how he dies zero times over the course of the two games we'll be looking at against EG. I mean, that's just crazy. In addition, let me know who you guys think is going to win the major in the comment section down below. I personally think it's going to be VG or I guess I'm going to say secret. I know I, I'm just going with upper bracket teams, at least at the time of this recording, but we'll have to see what happens. Also, like the video if you've been enjoying the major and want to see more content just like this. Now, quickly, if you are interested in learning more from pros, just watching pro matches, I'm doing that over on the Game League website. I just did a game where Gork played Snapfire, and I'm going to be doing more carry ones in the future. I've done a Winter Wyvern and a Snapfire at this point. I'm planning on doing one probably for AM, maybe one for Weaver. I, I just think these heroes are a little bit underutilized right now, and, and therefore, if you're interested in that, go check out the website, sign up, and hopefully I'll see you there. Also, if you do, let me know in the Discord, and I'll be happy to chat to you about it. Now, let's start right off the bat with the game where he plays over. D. Now, the reason why I really like this game in particular is because they literally picked it second, and I just want to talk about why they picked this hero so you guys can understand it and maybe put it in your pubs as well. So the first two picks we're going to see from EG are the Slark, followed up by a Chen. Now, if there's anything I know about Slark and Chen, it's that they don't necessarily like OD, and I'll give a couple reasons why. I don't think Chen is necessarily countered by OD, but I definitely like the idea of OD against Slark. Reason being, your ultimate allows you to kill him through his ultimate, his Shadow Dance. And Astral is an absolute nuisance to Slark because it doesn't allow him to burst and keep on top of targets. So overall, yeah, I just really like the OD pick here. And it's one of the most synergistic picks in the game with Omni Knight. So I just find it so cool that even though he literally got his hero first phase, he doesn't die this game. Now getting into the match, he doesn't actually do anything insane in the first 10 minutes. His laning stage was quite average for a professional player. <laughs> Obviously, it's definitely a very good laning stage. But for a professional player, definitely pretty solid. Definitely solid, but nothing crazy, right? Abed is not completely out of the game, but nothing insane. The reason why I like his play so much and I wish more people watched him to actually get better at Dota is just his pure play style. You notice the enemy team is showing up mid right now to push to mid tier 1. How many of you do you think, as a mid player, would go right now, run to it to defend? How many? Probably most people. That's how a lot of players function, but not Ori. He simply, right, secured the top tower with his team, and then just starts jungling. That's it. Also, if you guys have been watching OD throughout the tournament, you've probably seen that almost all of them are buying Ags now. In fact, I think in the next patch, OD's Ags will most likely get nerfed. But the cool thing about this game is the fact that he completely changes off the Giga meta build, and I'm saying Giga meta because it feels like every OD has done this, to a 4 staff. And now if we look at the enemy team, it's a great game for 4 staff because it allows you to get out of pounce number one. It can let you kite people out of, you know, whoever gets roared. It helps against that. It's a good counter to lift. And also just to top it off, it can help you get out of the way of EMP and, you know, just disengage when you're getting cold snap. Also, he eventually turns it into a hurricane pike, which we'll see, which makes a lot of sense to me. Because if we look at his team, it's literally four strength heroes. So as long as he can backline and stay alive, they're going to protect him. He's going to build up int and dominate the fights. And that's exactly what we're going to see. But yeah, just really to reiterate my point one more time before I move on a little bit, he's just pushing out lanes and jungling. Like, that's it. That's all that we're seeing here. And yet, this is a professional player, guys. That's the way that I'm coaching a lot of mid laners or even just looking at mid players' just decision making. I get so mad when it's random. Everyone's just doing random things. They have no clue what's going on. They're just making random decisions. They never jungle on heroes that are supposed to flash farm. It just confuses me. And now here we're going to see the first usage of the four staff that allows him to disengage and get off an absolutely deadly, and I mean deadly, ultimate. So what we're going to see here is he, he's just killing some neutral creeps. No big deal, right? But then he gets roared. Pretty bad situation. Thankfully, he does have an Omni Knight and a Trian, which is obviously going to help out. In addition, fantastic avalanche from the tiny. But this four staff allows him to clear his mind. Guys, no joke. Like, better positioning helps you see the fight better. He sees the fight. Ultis, they're all dead. I mean, a lot of that, of course, was their team. Great Avalanche, good RP, good tree and casting. But I think the Force Staff plays a big part in him being able to just get off his ultimate properly there and potentially win them the fight. Now, where this build gets really scary is the fact that he queues up a Moon Shard second. I mean, Moon Shard, like, ODs by Moon Shard second? Like, this is something I did not expect. I don't think anyone has, at least, maybe this is some sort of China build or build that people do in EU. 
I haven't seen this in NA at least. Everyone just goes Ags. <laughs> but no joke, I think it's really, really a great itemization based around his team, right? Number one, they have these frontliners, but number two, they have the Omni Knight that we talked about. Also, it synergizes with the Hurricane Pike. Hurricane Pike is not a DPS item per se, but it does allow you to get more hits off, and therefore Moonshard giving him a tech speed makes a ton of sense. Next clip I want to show off is just his humility in the mid lane role, and the reason why I'm calling it humility is when I watch a lot of mid lane players, and even myself when I'm playing core, I'll hesitate to do something like get bounties or contest the outpost, but Ori, he has no problem just walking over here to make sure that his team gets the outpost. It's just a really nice play to see from a mid laner, right, because usually you'll see the position for is suiciding to defend towers, but instead, he actually basically sets up for his team here to potentially get some kills. It doesn't happen right away, but I just love this from mid laners, and it's something you guys should consider in your pubs as well. This next clip, even though he didn't really carry it by any means, I just want to show it because it was cool. He four staffs in and just destroys them. <laughs> I mean, he didn't really steal any int or do anything there. <laughs> But I just thought it was really nice and fun to look at. And really, I, guys, I know I'm saying it again, but this is my favorite part about Ori, and it's why I want to make this video on him. The thing is, he has 185 CS on a hero that doesn't necessarily flash farm that quickly. OD farms fast, but not like, it's no Naga, right? And it's not, not some TA, but his CS is still very respectable with five kills. And I know a lot of his kills just came from purely his ultimate, and it's not like he's been setting things up around the map. But I, I, I just wish more people would do this and copy this playstyle. If you do, you will gain MMR as a mid laner. And really, it's just something sometimes I even feel like more pros should do, where they just play this farm style of Dota. That frankly works for a lot of these teams. Next up here, we're going to see fantastic patience. Patience is a trait that is developed over time within players, and it's very hard to actually teach. But the thing we're going to see here is that the enemy team basically runs at him with four to five heroes here, and he does not panic at all. When people get lifted, what do you think the reaction is going to be 9 times out of 10? Instantly, and I mean instantly Hurricane Pike out. But he knows better, he's a professional player and therefore he just walks it off. Literally no joke walks it off, does not commit the Hurricane Pike because he understands how important it is for him to actually win the fight. And now, right, cutting in the backline, exactly what we talked about, right? Behind his strength frontliners, it is a little bit, this is like a mosh pit, some crazy stuff going on here. But he's just chilling in the back and destroying people with these orbs. His attack speed is so high at this point. Slark can't do literally anything. I mean, his DPS against the Slark here is crucial for them winning these fights. Now we're going to see EG continuing to try to kite this fight out. But Vici, they just managed to make it work. He has so much stacks built up as well. 17 from purely the Arcane Orb. And he still has his ultimate. I mean, just great movement, great patience. And such perfect play. And finally, for the last part of this game, we're going to see a really nice itemization mixed up. He had a Lincoln's queued up. He even bought the ultimate orb while it was queued up. But then he switches it to the Hex. And I just think this is a great item for this game as they are naturally against a Slark. It's a great Slark counter only because it's an instant disable that can catch him off guard. Also, guys, just to point this out, his team is fighting mid or just running around. What is he doing? Just killing jungle camps. I can't stress this enough. Ha <laughs> ha Do it. And now we're going to see one of the last fights of the game. This is basically where EG crumbles and is essentially ready to call it. You could tell after this fight because the Slurk goes in, but the Hex comes out and there's absolutely nothing he can do about it. And yeah, that's just great itemization. I think the Hurricane Pike made complete sense because of his team comp. I think the Moonshard is very smart against the Slurk. And I think the Hex, same thing there. All right, now we are going into his Kunkka game where he goes 4-0 and goes a really bizarre item build. But the first thing I want to show is a clean play. A very clean play that I think goes to show how just, I don't know, thoughtful of a mid laner he is. I guess that's a word I'll use. But essentially, he's like threatening the Slark here, right? He's like, oh, you know, I could gank the Slark. It's a potential kill as Slark is not yet that tanky. But then, he notices a fight going on mid. And of course, because he's an efficient player, he's killing a camp, guys. Can't stress this enough. Just kill camps. But right... He sees his doom getting gone on, he sees the Arc Warden taking place, and he's like, oh, maybe we can kill him. Blind Torrent, Tidebringer for damage, X into the boat, and that's all she wrote. Wow, I'm, so, I'm such a great poet, holy guys. Jeez. But really, the beauty of Ori is what he does after he gets the kill. Does he run down mid? Does he start pushing mid tower? Does he go gank bottom? No, he kills some jungle camps, guys. Like, I... <laughs> I just don't understand why everyone thinks if you get a kill, it's like you have to go for the next kill or next objective. It's like, no, if you want to push your advantage, use the fact that they're dead and can't farm to actually push your advantage. And now we're going to see another little gank. Of course, this game, he's playing Kunkka, a much less greedy hero than Odie. And now he's just making plays. The Tidebringer onto the Venge, killing her off, but a quick 
and clear disengage. He has really just good awareness of how the fight is going. You can tell that he's very hesitant to save his teammate, and that's always a sign of a very high MMR player, or just, you know, I guess an actual pro. And now, my favorite part of the game, the item he queues up, is the Heaven's Halberd. This, in my opinion, is one of the best items in Dota right now for these strength sort of right clickers, such as Lifestealer, Huskar, Kunkka. Reason being that if we read the stats, this item is crazy. Dude, it's crazy. 25% evasion, which is insane as is, 20 strength, which is 400 health, 20% status resistance, the self HP regen and lifesteal lamp, which is definitely pretty solid for Kunkka, at least it can be, and then finally, of course, a disarm, which completely counters out the Slark, is pretty good against Arc Warden, is pretty good against Puck, and is extremely good against Arc Warden as well. He's just pushing waves in and killing camps, makes a nice little stack for efficiency, goes back mid. Where does he go? To the next camp, back to mid. He's just chilling. He's moving around, amping up his farm, getting to his item timing. But then we see a very high MMR thing to do. Quick smoke from the support. Guys, if you're a mid lane player, literally tell your supports to smoke you to a side lane. It is much more efficient and reliable at getting kills and will not disrupt your farming patterns nearly as much as you just running from side lane to side lane. So really try this one out. I did it with my friends recently. And yes, it is very effective. Now we're going to see the first tower push that he actually participates in the entire game unless I missed one from earlier. And the one thing I want to point out is that he had an item and his team kind of came together. You notice how he didn't just walk up and hit it, right? This is a proper tower push. The enemy team was not there, so it's quick and clean, right? They didn't want to defend, quick and clean. But for the most part, it's based around the fact that his entire team was there and he has an item timing that he could play around, right? If they fight, he actually has an item that would allow them to win the fight. Yes, believe it or not, guys, you can make plays and pushes based upon what items you have it doesn't have to be completely random i mean my man does everything like look at this sequence guys it's such a beautiful sequence as we're going to see here so he tps bottom right onto the shrine picks up a kill onto the venge after that he pushes out a bottom creep wave which is you know my favorite play in dota and then he takes the shrine like it literally doesn't i just love this so much it's just nice dota i, I just like watching nice dota you guys probably like watching Knight's Dota. Who doesn't like watching Dota? And finally, he does what I like to call the OG maneuver, where you basically just push in a creep wave and then run legitimately across the map to your team. The reason why I call it the OG maneuver is I, I analyzed Anna a long time ago on his Ember Spirit, and this is what he would do. He'd just kind of shove in a wave, he'd remnant back to the lane, and then he'd instantly connect with his team, applying pressure to one lane, right, top lane, in this case for the Kunkka, and then immediately show up with his team, completely splitting the enemy team because they want to farm, at the same time creating absolute pressure in the threat of an actual fight with his team. And I just think it's really, really smart, really clean, and one of my favorite plays to see from anyone. And now as I've really started to watch this game more and more, I've started to kind of fully understand why they pick Kunkka when they have a Drow. I mean, there's a lot of reasons, right? It's a good matchup against the Slark. It's pretty good against the Arc Warden, definitely in lane. At least pretty solid in lane. He did well. But most importantly, it gives them a lot of lane clears. So if you look at the heroes on their team, they have an Abaddon, Lich, and Doom. Drow's fine at pushing waves with multi-shot. But Doom, Abaddon, and, and Lich don't do that good of a job of shoving waves, right? They're not amazing. Doom can be okay, and you can have fought a shield a wave. It's just not super, super fast. And typically, they want to be setting up kills or protecting their teammates. So the Kunkka pick is just really, really nice for that. And now let's look at a fight where the Halberd really comes into play and enables him to just kind of shut down the threat of EG, at least the threat of our PZ. So right, he pounces in, and now they can kind of just do whatever they want. They have the really nice X combo onto the Slark. And of course, he's rushed a BKB, which allows them to disengage. I just wish more people would buy items like this. I see Kunkas and pubs, and they just rush Daedalus. They rush Shadowblade. They rush Battle Fury. It's like... Dude, you actually make me want to blow my head off. You have like a thousand HP on Kunkka. Play the hero for what it can be, which is a frontliner that naturally, now, with good stats, has 230 damage, and you can actually right-click people. Imagine that, playing Kunkka where you can actually right-click people, not having to completely rely on Tidebringer. And that's the beauty of this item build. It's very tanky, and it's also high damage. People don't realize defensive items, guys, can give you damage. So what I want you to do next as a part of this video is take a look at the EG team comp and tell me what is their goal now that they're behind, right? What would a team like that do when they're behind? Well, it's actually quite simple what their game plan will most likely be, right? The execution is the difficult part, but the overall game plan is simple. They're going to use heroes like Puck, Tiny, and Arc Warden, actually even the Slark who has Ags now and is very mobile to shove waves and delay the game, right? That's what these heroes do. Puck is probably the best in the game at it, Right, at least staying safe while doing it. Tiny is good too because he one shots the wave and can blink out. And of course, Arc Warden is actually at this point in the game much better than Puck. 
I definitely should have said that. And so EG can delay this game for a very long time if VG cannot keep the lanes in, right? If they can't keep up the pressure, they're going to get split pushed and the high ground will get delayed. So what does VG Ori do? Being the big brain player that he is, he buys boots to travel before his salt cures, and I just like this, right? Sure, he loses some damage and some armor from his face boots. That is quite nice this game, but he addresses the main threat from EG, which is not necessarily a fighting threat, but a strategical threat. So the bots come in and he identifies what he should be doing through the game. And this is what you guys kind of got to do too. I think innovating on item builds is very difficult and I typically advise against it. Usually just copying pros is your best bet. But if you have a real inkling that your job is to do something like delay the split push or deal with the split push, you can go something like bots on basically any hero. And that's exactly what we're going to see. He pushes in mid, takes a jungle camp and can consistently deal with the waves. Bots bottom, he now bots top, pushes in the wave and is ready for a fight. And he's just going to keep doing this. This is really the best way to get farmed, but also deal with the map and keep on pressure. I don't think people realize that. You can, no joke, keep up map pressure by just farming. In fact, one of the best ways to keep a safe laner alive as any other role is to split the map away from them because you're going to draw attention away from them and towards you. And now this game is basically GG. They just run it down mid. He has a Bloodthorn, which is hilarious in my opinion i don't remember the last time i've seen a kunkka buy a bloodthorn but my man has one it definitely is good with the drow right clicks that's for sure it also forces things like a bad bkb out of slark it can simply help them catch the slark it's of course great against puck and even allows them to kill people like vench and tiny without stalling also i'm gonna end off the video here even though it's completely off topic i think it's just hilarious <laughs> maybe hilarious isn't the right word i saw this not live but in the highlight and i was like what in the world? How do you even time this? Like, is it? I think this is legitimately perfect timing. Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> how did P Y? How do you even time? Like, could he have used phase shift? He must have been trying, right? Like, there's no way he wasn't trying to phase shift. But War Stomp is like the last ability I would think that could catch a puck out of phase shift that has a bad cast animation and it's very clunky. And yet he made it work. That's why I think VG is just such a god team. These team comps really impress me. They're very tanky, very uh very snowball-y, and I just love to see it, where they're just shoving in waves, choking out their opponents, and then run them over. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe to help our channel grow, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero, or roll, or just polish up your existing skills, Game Leap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now, right now, to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys, 25%, and start your journey today.